Hi, welcome to my channel, Math Made Easy with Laurel. I'm Laurel, and in this video, we're gonna talk about the Texas Instrument 30XA. If you're currently an apprentice in Saskatchewan, you will be writing a journey person exam and in that exam, you will be provided with a specific scientific calculator called the Texas Instrument 30XA. I think it's very important to be familiar with this calculator before you write that exam. So I highly recommend that you buy it as soon as you can and use it throughout your apprenticeship years to get very familiar with it. In this video, I'm gonna talk about four specific areas that's gonna be applicable for all apprentices and all trades. And then there will be a second follow-up video and it will be on functions that are specific to just certain trades. So to start with, we're gonna talk about how we use the calculator to do fractions. We're gonna talk about the order of operations on this calculator, how to find powers and roots, and how to use the memory function. So let's get started. I have an older version of the calculator. So my second function is going to be yellow and all of the printing above the main functions is going to be yellow. If you have a current calculator, it's going to be the same, except that instead of yellow, it'll be green. I want to start off by talking about how you can use the fraction functions on your calculator to do a lot of difficult work for you. The first one is A and B over C, and that's going to be second function from the bottom on the left. Then your second function, which is the colored one, it'll be yellow or green. And then on the bottom left, you're also going to have an arrow button. And above that arrow button, you're going to see F arrow D going back and forth. So with those three functions, we can easily do these questions and any other questions involving fractions. So we can change a fraction to a decimal. We can change a decimal to a fraction, whether it's less than one or greater than one. And we can do any operations, adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, keeping our numbers in fraction form and getting our result in fraction form. So let's take a look at these examples. All right, we're gonna do the fraction examples. We're gonna change 17 over 32 to a decimal. So first of all, we're gonna turn the calculator on and we're gonna enter 17 and then you're going, to, you're going to use your fraction key, which is A and B over C. And then you'll see a little symbol there that separates the numerator from the do denominator. It's like a backwards L. And then you enter the denominator. And now you want to change it to a decimal. And the way that you change either a fraction to a decimal or a decimal to a fraction is by using this second function and this arrow. When you use the second function and the arrow, that activates the function above the main function, and you'll see that it says f to d and d to f, so it goes either way. So we're gonna go second function and that arrow, and 17 over 32 is equal to 0.53125. We could go back to a fraction by doing exactly the same thing. Second function, arrow, and it's 17 over 32. So whether you enter a fraction or a decimal and you use this function, your calculator will change it to the other. Let's change 0.75 to a fraction, I'll clear it. So 0.75, we wanna change that to a fraction, so we do exactly the same thing. There it is, three quarters. Again, I could go back to a fraction by doing exactly the same thing. If our number is greater than one, we're gonna get a whole number as well as a fraction. So let's do that, 1.2, and we wanna change that to a fraction. So it will be one and one fifth. So they use an underscore to separate the whole number from the fraction and then that backwards L to, to separate the numerator from the denominator. So 1.2 is equal to one and one fifth. Again, I can go back to a decimal. Then if I have an operation, whether it's addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division, I can use my fraction function to do the operation and keep my answer in fraction form. So if I had 15 over 16, I'm going to enter that 15, then I press my fraction button, and then I press the denominator, 16. Now I press my operation, plus. Now I have 
a mixed number here, so I entered the whole number first, one, press your fraction key, and then one, press your fraction key again, and one, and then put the denominator. So it, it understands that you're, you're going to enter the whole number first, then the numerator, then the denominator. And then you simply press equals, and the answer is two and three sixteenths. If you want that as a decimal, do what we've been doing, second function arrow, it's equal to 2.1875. If you decide, no, I wanted it as a fraction, just go back to a fraction form. So this is a very powerful function that's going to save you a lot of time. The next thing I want to talk about is order of operations on this particular calculator as well as any scientific calculator. If you have a non-scientific calculator, it will perform the operations in the order in which you enter them. However, on any scientific calculator, including this calculator, it will follow what's called the order of operations. And you may or may not remember taking bed mass in high school. And what that refers to is the order of the operations. So B represents brackets. So brackets need to be done first. Then E represents exponents. So if something's raised to a power of two or three, that needs to be performed first. Then D represents division, M represents multiplication. So division and multiplication are done next, left to right. And lastly, we have addition and subtraction, and they're done left to right. So it's important to understand that your calculator is going to be following this when you're doing your calculations because you might be putting your numbers in in a certain order and expecting your calculator to do the calculations in that same order and that might not be true. Let's take a look at a couple of examples. So if we were finding, for example, Fahrenheit temperature when we knew Celsius temperature was 10, we plug into our formula Fahrenheit equals 1.8 times Celsius plus 32. And if I were to punch this into my calculator, I would not need to worry about the order that I'm punching it in because I want it to do multiplication first and then addition, and that's the order I'm gonna punch it in. So on my calculator, if I was to enter 1.8 times 10 plus 32, it's going to do the multiplication first, which is what I want it to do, and that will be 18, and then it will do the addition, so I'm gonna get 50. So the order of operations wasn't an issue with this question. However, let's take a look at an example where we're trying to find the average. If we wanted to find the average of two numbers, and I'm picking easy numbers, um, you wouldn't necessarily need to use a calculator to do this, but if I wanted to find the average of 10 and 20, I'm looking for the number right in the middle. The way that you find the average of two things is you add them up and then divide by two. If you had three things, you would add the three things up and divide by three. Now, although we don't have brackets in the numerator, this fraction symbol represents a grouping symbol. So it means this whole numerator divided by this denominator. So it's like there are brackets around the numerator, even though there isn't. If I were to do this question on a non-scientific calculator, I could simply punch in 10 plus 20 divided by two, and it would do 10 plus 20 first and I would get a subtotal and then it would divide by two. However, on a scientific calculator, it will not work that way. If you were to punch in 10 plus 20 divided by two, a scientific calculator is gonna take 20 and divide by two first. It would get 10 and then it would add to, to that 10. It would do the addition last. So there's two ways you can correct that. One, you could put brackets, so that forces your calculator to do the addition first. And you'll find the brackets on your calculator. And there will be a front bracket and there will be an end bracket. So then it will take 30, divide by two, and you'll get 15. The other option is you can force your calculator to do the totals before you do the next operation. So I could have gone 10 plus 20, and you do want your calculator to add that before it does the division, so you force it to add by pressing equals. 
then you're going to divide by two and you will get the correct answer that way. So be aware of the order of operations that your calculator is following. When I teach belt lengths, this is a common calculation that needs to be done. And I find that students often make a mistake with it because they forget about the order of operations with their calculator. Let's now talk about powers and roots. If you take a look at your calculator and look at these two keys here and this one here, you're going to see these functions. First of all, these functions are used for powers. So if, for example, you have five squared, you're going to enter five and press this button. If you have five cubed or five to another power, you're going to use this function. And I'll show you how to do that in, in just a minute. If you're finding the square root, so let's say we want to find the square root of 36, we just simply press 36 and then our square root function. If you have to find any other root, like cubed root, fourth root, or fifth root, you're going to use this function, but it, it's not a main function on your calculator. It's actually the second function of this function. You're probably not going to be working with roots other than square roots, so I'm not going to do examples with that. But let's take a look at doing examples using these three functions. So let's take a look at the power functions. There's the square function, x raised to the power of 2. And then we have any other power, we use y to the x. So if we wanted to square 5, we would just put 5 and then press x squared. Now we might do something like that if we were finding the area of a circle that had a radius of 5. So in order to do that, we can actually punch this in exactly the way it's written because your calculator will do exponents first and then multiplication because it follows orders of operation. So I could go pi and we have a special pi button there and if you press that it shows you pi to a lot of decimal places which is going to be more accurate than if you were to use 3.14 or 3.1416. So I always recommend using the pi button on your calculator. Now we're going to multiply that to 5 squared. So see it squared at first and now it's going to multiply it when you press equals. So there's your answer 78.54 whatever the unit is. Let's take a look at doing another power. Let's say we have 5 cubed. So if we did 5 cubed we have to put the base in first 5 then we press y to the x and then we press the exponent and then you have to press equals. So 5 cubed is 125. 5 cubed means 5 times 5 times 5, but, but it's a shortcut way to find it. Now you might be cubing a number if you were finding, for example, the volume of a sphere. The volume of a sphere is 4 thirds times pi times the radius cubed. So let's plug that in. I would enter 4 thirds as a fraction, so 4, fraction button, thirds, times pi, times 5, to the power of 3. Again, it's going to do order of operations. It's going to do the exponent before it does the multiplication. Then when you press equals, you can be confident that that's the correct answer. Lastly, if you were asked to find the square root of 36, you're going to put the number in first, 36, and then you're going to press your square root function. The last function I want to talk about is the memory function on this calculator. Often you will be doing calculations and you'll get a number and you're going to need the, to use that number to do further calculations, but you need to store it. Now you may write it down and then punch it back in, but if it has a lot of decimal places, you're probably going to round it off, which will introduce error, or you might write it down incorrectly, or you might punch it back in incorrectly. So there's a very efficient way that you can store that number actually on the calculator and then bring it up to use it for further calculations later. So the buttons are the functions that you're going to use. Along the left hand side you'll see STO for, and that represents store and you will see RCL and that represents recall. You actually have three memory locations on this calculator. So when you're going to store a number you have to tell your calculator where you're going to store it and then when you recall it you have to tell the calculator where you're recalling it from. So let's take a look at how we use these functions. Let's look at the memory function. So I have store and recall. 
let's randomly pick a number, 4.5, and I'm gonna store that. So I press store, and then I have to tell my calculator where. So it, it requires both of those functions. So I'm gonna store it in memory one. You have the option of memory one, memory two, or memory three. When you do that, you will see a little M1 come up on the display that tells you that you currently have a number stored in the calculator. Then if I want to use that number, let's say I have 158, and I want to divide by that number, I don't have to put that number in again. What I can do is recall it, but I have to recall it from the correct location, so I go recall one, so notice it comes up. I have to press equals to finish the operation. Now I recalled it, but it's still in the memory. It will stay in the memory until you do one of two things. Let's clear this. Notice it's still in the memory. One way you can get rid of it is to put a new number in the memory. So let's say I put 78 and I store that in memory one. Now when I recall memory one, 78 is there. The 4.5 is gone. That's one way to get rid of it. Or the other option, if you don't like having that little M1 on there, clear your calculator so that you have a zero on the display. Once you have a zero on the display, store the zero, and when you store the zero, it clears the memory. It's personal preference. You don't have to clear it because as soon as you store a new number, the old number is gone. So remember when you're storing, say store and where, so either store one or store two or store three, and then when you recall, you have to say where. Practice using your calculator. Get comfortable using these functions because they will make your life much easier. For those of you that are in trades such as machine shop or pipe fitting or plumbing, where you're going to be using angles and the trig functions, take a look at the next video where I discuss those functions on this particular calculator.